Welcome back to On the Couch. Still with us, producer, director extraordinaire Mfundi Bundla. Mfundi, you're not a man that's immune to controversy. Mm -hmm. Born in Johannesburg, you studied in the Eastern Cape, you expelled yeah. from university for so called underground political activity. Yeah. Give us a glimpse of what your life was like at that stage. Well, uh, I mean, I was, you know, 19, 20 years old. I was, you know, um, in the Eastern Cape at Forte University, the only university I, I was allowed to go to. But I was from Johannesburg. I was five miles away from Wits, but I wasn't allowed to go to Wits. So I had to go to this institution, you know, out in the Eastern Cape there, which, you know, so... Uh, I was not happy there, you know, and uh, we had uh, um, uh, uh, a system of education which was, you no, know, not. I mean, the professors there really didn't care about us. We, you know, you didn't feel welcome, and uh, you. I mean, they were. We were, we were like trained to be subversives, actually, because the system ended up making us subversives because. Uh, it was, it was anti-freedom. It was at that time South Africa. I mean, it was fascist. It's a fascist country. I mean, we were not allowed to vote and didn't have the the franchise and all that sort of yeah. thing. People, Mandela was in jail, and you know, it was a tough. There was special branch all over the place. There were spies at our institution. You know, like, you know, our estimation that one out of every f four students was a police spy. You know, so you had to be careful as to you know, uh, who you, you say, talk to, what, what you, you say, and, that's, and, and that sort of thing. So it was an oppressive environment. But, you know, some of us were, I guess, brave enough to stand up, you know. I mean, we were in the, I was uh, in the underground of the ANC and uh, the Communist Party, and, uh, and our task was to <laughs> stir up trouble mm -hmm. against the, 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 the system. And uh, we were, we, we had a strike, uh, and uh, uh, 21 of us were expelled. And after that expulsion, I came back to Johannesburg. We were harassed by the police, and uh, we couldn't get jobs and that sort of thing. And uh, I was lucky enough to get a scholarship mm -hmm. to leave the country, because some people in America read in the papers about what happened to us, and they offered two scholarships to to, to people, to, you know, to of the 21. Right. So, so two so of the 21. So 21. I, wa I was one of those. Wow. And uh, I, uh, I had an invalid South African passport. And uh, so um, what happened was I, I sent a telegram to, uh, to Helen Sussman yeah. in Parliament. And I told them, uh, Mrs. Sussman, this is who I am. And uh, I have a scholarship to the University of Massachusetts, full scholarship. And I fear that I will lose it because I do not have a South African passport. And I've, been a, I've applied for a passport. And it's... There's no indication that I'm going to get it. Would you kindly uh, help me? Mm. And uh, in about a week, I, I got a telegram from her saying that my passport is in the mail. And uh, I uh, went to the Institute of Race Relations in, um, in uh, Brownfontein, and I showed them my letter of admission to the University of Massachusetts, uh, that I had a full scholarship there. All I needed was a uh, an air ticket to get myself there. and uh, they, they paid my way, they, pay, they found money for my ticket, and off I went. That's incredible. And I left. And then I went, I, was, I landed in uh, New York City with $200 in my <laughs> pocket. And I took a bus to, to MS Massachusetts. And, you know, um, at that point, I thought I was going to be there just for my degree. But yeah. I got active in the anti apartheid movement. That's right. And my passport was revoked. That's right. And I ended up uh, being in America for 21 years. Yeah. But you also met your wife, Karen. Yes. And you both wrote for NYPD Blue. No, what happened was, we didn't, we didn't write for NYPD Blue. What happened was, um, uh, uh, my third play, mm -hmm. uh, the reception, uh, uh, no, no people hang around there yeah, after yeah. the play. I met a woman, a South African woman, who was a vice president at Sotheby's, which is the art auction house. Yes, yes. And uh, she asked me whether, you know, I was interested in writing for television. I said, sure, yeah, but I don't know anybody in television. She said, oh, uh, my, my husband is uh, related to 
a producer out in California will put you guys together. So, um, and they did, and then I got a phone call, and but it was a voicemail on my you know answering machine, and there was a guy called David Milch. Now I didn't just I, I never believed I'd ever get a phone call from a David Milch. I mean David Milch is like in the top five yeah, of producers yeah. worldwide, and uh, and then I I called him I called him up and, and he said oh next time you're in Los Angeles we'll, we'll do lunch, and I raised some money and I got in, I got bought an air ticket I flew to Los Angeles. And I called him from there. I said, I'm here. Opportunity uh, like that, you got it. Yes. <laughs> and then he said, okay, it's a five-hour <laughs> flight from yeah, New yeah, York to Los yeah. Angeles. So and I said, I'm here. And then he said, okay, come on, meet me at the wine bistro. And then I went there and I met him. And, and then he asked me what I wanted to do. And he asked me what my wife does and things like that. He said, why don't, okay, we'll take care of your wife. Your wife can come and work for me. And we'll figure out what, what, what to do with you. Mm -hmm. So we moved from New York to Los Angeles. In New York there, you know, we used to sit around playwrights, you know, we used to look down on guys who were out there in Hollywood. You know, we thought that we were the main writers, you know, we were writing for the stage yes. and we considered the guys in Hollywood as sellouts. Oh. You know, we had that we were working around with a chip on our shoulder, but secretly all of us you actually wanted to be them. Wanted to be there. <laughs> you know, but we put up this attitude, you know. But that and, and, and David Mills saw that attitude in me and he and he sorted me out right away. Because that became a reality for you. For yeah, you. yeah. Because you started working on, on um films. Yes. You worked with Samuel L. Jackson. Yes, indeed, yes. I mean, what was it like to work with Hollywood royalty? Yes. That that one was also like quite interesting because when I was in the th theatre scene in, in New York City he was there in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the company called the Negro Ensemble Company, and my wife was the manager in, of the theater. My wife went on tour with Samuel L. Jackson in a play called Home, and we were neighbors in Harlem. So we, you know, we, we, we knew each other you know, back then when none of us were anybody. And, uh, but Sam, we moved to California before Sam did. Sam Jackson actually found us there. And then he, were, he got a part in Jurassic Park and everything, and he, he died. He, he, di he dies in the first 30 minutes, I think. <laughs> but he's still there. But, he's, but, yeah, <laughs> but he, he went on to do Pulp Fiction and yeah, all yeah. these other things. And then what happened was, when I was back here, um, he uh, contacted us and told us he wanted to do a film here, but the people here were having problems raising the finance. Mm. So I was asked to come in, and then I raised finance through the IDC, and that's how I got into the movie scene. Mm. And then I ended up working with him on, with uh, Juliette Binoche on right. the movie called Country of My Skull or In My Country. Uh, mm -hmm. You still friends today? Oh yeah, 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 yes indeed, yes, those friends. Excellent. Those friends. Let's talk about the South African film industry, because if you think about it, we're location rich, mm -hmm. it's cost effective to shoot here. Mm -hmm. What is the future, Mfundi, um, of, of filming in South Africa and the local industry? No, I think, you know, um, you know, S South Africa is one of the few countries in the world today where there's the support for the film industry. I mean, like, you know, in England, they shut down, the, 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 the film council was shut down in, in England, you know. There's no support there for, for, for film, really. And, uh, and, uh, but here we have the Department of Trade and Industry, which is a rebate. IDC. We have the IDC. We have the National Film and Video Foundation, and uh, so there is support. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about Mfundi the philanthropist, just to just to end off our conversation. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're involved in a few projects, mm -hmm. in film sponsorship, in bursaries, even pro golf mm -hmm. sponsorship. So, do you think Mfundi, your success in life has brought you to a point where you want to give back? You want to give back to people and give other people the opportunity to maybe follow in your footsteps? Y y yes, indeed. I think I think it's very important. You know, you know. Just, go, just to sort of give a, a context to, the, to my philanthropic activity. One, one day I was sitting there in Los Angeles and I, and I, I had a, a moment with David Milch. And then I said to him, you know, you know I'm from South Africa, you know, and now what, 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 why, why are you helping me? You know, and then, uh, I mean, I'm not even an American, you know, and... Uh, 
And he said to me, you know, uh, Stephen Bochco gave me a break into the, in the television. Mm -hmm. And Bochco said that, I hope you're going to help somebody else. You're going to give somebody else a break. You know, and that's, all, that's, that's, that, that's all I'm going to say to you. And, and somebody gave me a break yeah. in South Africa. And um, so uh, I realized that I had to uh, do something in, in South Africa. And uh, when I, I, you know, I, I established, a, a I gave the University of Pretoria one million rands about, um, <coughs> about in, in 1996 mm -hmm. and uh, for a graduate scholarship in, in science and technology. And uh, the requirements being that the, the recipients must have passed their baccalaureate with distinction in a science or technology area. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, so and so far I've educated pretty close to 20 people through that, you know, the, the interest from that million. So it's like people are being educated on the interest of that money. So uh, there are 20 people I've educated through that who are not my relatives. Right, they are chosen right. by an independent panel. Yeah, I have yeah. nothing to do with it, and that sort of thing. It's uh, almost like passing the baton, isn't it? Yeah, yes. One indeed. person gets an opportunity. I mean, now yeah, 20 people. Yeah, there's 20 people I've educated who are, who are, who are not my relatives. Lastly, mm -hmm. what would you like to leave behind as a legacy as Mfundi Vundla? Oh, my, my, oh, the legacy I'd like to leave behind is my work. That, you know, I tried my best I, uh, in television and film. That uh, my, you know, hopefully uh, I'm a building block for people who come after me to, to be better than, than me. And to follow in your footsteps. Mm -hmm. Mfundi, it was wonderful talking to you. Yes, Thank you so much yeah. for chatting to us on, on the couch. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Thank Thanks. You.